Well, the heifers will usually kick in about the end of January, so the majority of our kids, the bulls are February and March born. How old are they when you sell them? We'll sell, we have our sale the, like we just had it the 10th April. So they're just, you know, they're 13, you know, 12 to 13 months. We did raise a few fall, fall bulls that were raised, that were, um, we were, that's why we had that. We used those cows for that pure power, that, that uh, Canadian bull, and just to get some outcrosses to kind of use those bulls. So we did have a few falls. That's the first time we've ever sold any falls in our sale. And they went over good. But, um, you know, our yearlings, We some people, if I can get them here to look at our bulls, if they, they think they have to have falls or two-year-olds, if I can ever get them here to look at them, you know, we don't feed them, get them fat, but we we still got enough performance in them that I feel like if you go waited, if you held every one of these bulls over as a two-year-old, you know, those bulls are going to get too big to start out yeah. with. But they're going to, you're also lose lose a full year of use out. Mm -hmm. What what do you average? I can say at your sale. Pat, what, of our, uh, the what's price? your yeah your price average about? We had an exceptional sale because of the we averaged over six thousand dollars a bull this year, and and that's up considerable from what we have been doing. Um, Is that how sort of high prices for the they, for the beef, or is there just an extra demand in your share? I think it's I think it just followed that. You know, guys telling me they take a cull bull in, you know, an old bull they'd used for seven eight years and took him in and got thirty five hundred dollars for him. You know. Well, they toss another 3500 with it and go buy a pretty nice bull, you know, for seven, you know. I was surprised. I was amazed. I, this is the greatest sale we'd ever had. I didn't I didn't dream of having, you know, the, those fall bulls would come in and the first one brought 15000 and and then the rest of them, they were just eight, ten, just boom, as fast as you could bring them in the ring. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> and I leaned over. He, he was here this morning and Darren... Helped, helped us a lot years ago when he was going to NJC, the junior college here, and and, uh, and I leaned over to him. I he was working the ring for me, and and I leaned over and later on, about the middle of the sale, I, the auctioneer was kind of hung up there for a little bit, and this bull wasn't doing anything. I leaned over to Darren, and I said, Darren, I said it's kind of weird to be having hung up at five thousand dollars. <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but it was a good sale. And, but I, I, you know, what, what I amazed me also, though, even though they're paying more money, they they realize they can pay more money for a bull, but they would pay more money for the best ones. That it wasn't that bottom end was still there. That bottom end stayed stayed where, you know, and I always felt you got to have a thirty thousand, thirty five hundred dollar bull for that guy that isn't gonna. He's just not gonna pay anymore now. So I leave a few of those in there just for them. <laughs> I don't take that bottom completely off, but they—they they have told me the last two years they want performance and they want—they want the good bulls. They want the good big rib eyes and the, and the marbling scores up high and and good weaning weights and good yearling weights. And then, of course, they want them to calf, lay down and calf and, huh. and grow, grow like that. Everything. Yeah, they want it all, but <laughs> they'll pay for the one that's that way. <laughs>